If you've built an Intel-based system with i7 or i5 processor, you most probably ran into thermal issues when the CPU is pushed to its maximum performance. Be it either at standard clock speeds or even more critical when you overclock the CPU. There are several ways to keep your CPU cool and still performant. In this video, we will lay the foundations to make this happen by deleting the CPU, applying liquid metal for optimal heat dissipation and what to consider when choosing a cooling solution. This part will cover the deleting with an in-depth guide on what to take care of. The next video will cover how to then overclock and undervolt the CPU and RAM to get the maximum performance out of your system. So first of all, let's talk about CPU temperatures and why Intel CPUs have such a problem with it. Intel CPUs, especially the i5 and i7 models, use a very cheap thermally conductive paste for their CPUs to dissipate heat from its die. What's a die? The die is the CPU chip which sits underneath the metal heat spreader. Just with the now announced 9th generation Intel started soldering the die and the heat spreader for better heat dissipation like IMD does it for years now. But what do users of all Intel chips do? They can either try to use a very heavy cooling solution like a big IO or a very good air cooling. But that's not completely resolving the problem as Intel uses cheap thermally conductive paste between the heat spreader and the die. Instead you can delete the CPU, apply a liquid metal with better thermal characteristics and use that in conjunction with a good cooler and overclock for even better thermals underboard the CPU. Before you go ahead, deleting is quite easy, but you will void your warranty as soon as you separate the heat spreader from the CPU. So before getting to work, you should test if the CPU runs as expected. Do some performance tests and then get to work. It's also quite good to see how the CPU performs at factory settings to have a baseline for later comparison. So without further ado, let's get to work. Every step for deleting should be done with caution and as precise and clean as possible. You won't break something that easy but you will get the best results by taking care of the details. First of all, what do we need to delete the CPU? Apply liquid metal and glue back the heat spreader onto the CPU. Obviously we need a CPU. I chose to delete the 8700K as it's quite a hot chip both in terms of performance and temps. Clean the CPU and your cooling tower before you get started. It just takes some minutes and you can use Arco for example to just get rid of the old thermal paste. The second most important thing is the delete tool. There are several ones out there. I ordered mine by Der Bauer as it seems to be the easiest one to use and it's made out of aluminium. Very important is also the silicon modified conformal coating. It's used to avoid short circuits by liquid metal hitting the condensers on the CPU. For later re-cluing I used high temperature silicon by Uhu. My thermal compound of choice for the lidding is Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot, which is a liquid metal compound. For applying it, I use Q-tips and some tape to not drip anything where it doesn't belong. For cleaning, I use some alcohol and that's basically everything you need. As we already cleaned the CPU and the cooling tower, let's continue by unscrewing the delete tool. Put the CPU into the tool's aluminium base matching the triangle. This is familiar as it's the same routine as with the CPU socket where you install your CPU. Put on the aluminium cover and use the hex wrench to screw in the bolt. Screw until you hear a Kaneki or Kanali sound. Screw just a little bit further and then remove the screw and the lid. The heat spreader of the CPU should already be shifted quite a bit. Take the CPU out of the dealer tool and separate the heat spreader from the CPU. Avoid touching the bottom of the CPU. On the heat spreader I use the paper cutter to just get rid of the glue. But don't use the paper cutter on the CPU itself because it will damage the board. Mark the die on the heat spreader. I use the paper cutter to gently cut the shape into the metal. Don't push too hard, as the metal is quite soft and you just want to have a shape on there for later taping. You can cut through the thermal compound without any problem. Use alcohol to get rid of the thermal compound on the heat spreader. 
that's quite easy and you don't have to take care that much of anything. Here you can see the edges of the die we now use to tape the heat spreader for later application of liquid metal. Afterwards you can just use tape to mask the spot we apply liquid metal later on. Next step is a bit tidy. Cleaning the CPU from the cheap thermal compound used by Intel and the glue on the borders. You can use a spatula or a credit card. I used the second one and it worked wonders for me. Cleaning the die itself I just used some tissue. Afterwards clean both the heat spreader and the die with alcohol. Some people are using a special two-stage cleaner, but for me it was sufficient enough to use alcohol. The next step is very important. A lot of people tend to skip on this in their video tutorials. But I found it to be very important. Insulating the what I believe are contacts besides the CPU die. For this I use the silicon modified conformal coating. It's a bit like nail polish. Apply several layers. Let each layer dry for several minutes before applying the next one some of the liquid metal drips off the die, it's not short circuiting the CPU. Put in the comments below if you have a cheaper suggestion for that like tape for example. Also be your mind, usually your motherboard with the CPU is vertically mounted in the case. So assuming that over time liquids pour down at least a tiny bit, the chances of moving liquid metal are maybe real. But maybe I'm just paranoid about that. After everything is dried and clean, rip open the liquid metal packaging. You will find some specialized q-tips in there as well as cleaning tissue. Again clean the dye and the heat spreader, but now with the cleaning tissue which is shipped with the liquid metal compound. Now we are getting serious. Screw on the very fine needle onto the cartridge. Do a test run to get a feeling on how to dose the right amount of liquid metal. Just use some liquid metal way smaller than a small pinhead. You just want to have a thin layer on both sides. To distribute it on the die and the heat spreader, it takes some time. Don't give up, at some point it's done. If you need some more liquid metal, just apply a tiny bit more. If you were successful, the heat spreader and the die should have chrome-like, very shiny layers on top. Now we start putting things back together. First remove the tape from the heat spreader. You can clearly see how thin the layer of liquid metal is. Even this thin layer works wonders. Apply the high temperature glue to the border of the heat spreader and try to work as clean as possible and just apply a thin line all the way around it. Remove everything that's over the edge. Put back the CPU into the dealer tool. Be aware that you take care of the triangle corners like you did before deleting. Put the plastic piece on top to place the heat spreader correctly onto the CPU. Just take care of the correct orientation of the heat spreader when you put it back onto the CPU.
afterwards put on the press. It applies pressure to the heat spreader. Let it rest at least for half an hour, but better 24 hours that it is completely set. I chose to let it rest for a whole day. You have now successfully deleted the CPU. If liquid metal is too risky for you, you can of course just apply a better thermal compound. But the results won't be as drastic as with liquid metal. Put your CPU back into the socket and use a decent thermal compound. Don't use liquid metal here as it could A. drop onto your motherboard and cause some short circuit there and B. liquid metal could corrode or destroy the aluminium cooler I used here. With coolers out of copper it's maybe a different thing but actually you won't gain that much more heat dissipation here with liquid metal. I used thermal grizzly cryonaut which I applied with the included spudger to the heat spreader. Also don't forget to clean the plate of the air cooler itself. Reinstall the air cooler and we're done. Let's take a closer look at the temperatures now with the 5 GHz overclocked settings under full load. With Geekbench 4 the CPU maxed out at 77 degrees Celsius. With Prime95 stress test the CPU maxed out at 85 degrees Celsius after an hour of constant load. Considering 5 GHz and all 6 cores, that's very impressive. Cinebench R15 maxed out the CPU at 82 degrees Celsius. Let's just talk about water versus air cooling. For sure, most of the people think that water cooling is still the way to go for overclocking. But that's not the case anymore. There are very good air cooling solutions in the market. I use a Noctua NHD15S, which is just a big aluminium tower with one industrial grade fan. The benefits are that there is not a risk of water damage in your system, cleaning is very easy and as soon as the system is idle, the fan speeds drop and the system is very quiet. You just have to take care that the fans are from a quality brand and you have a decently sized aluminium body. Water cooling solutions on the other hand are heating up slower but also decrease their heat slower because liquids are cooling down slower than air. This just means that you delay the activity of the fans on your system. Tests on YouTube also show that water cooling is now usually louder compared to a good air cooler because a big radiator needs at least two if not three fans and the pump is also a source of noise. Forget about the old myth that air cooling is louder than water cooling. Which cooling solution you choose is maybe more a matter of taste as both solutions are equally good suited for overclocking. So in the end, should you delete? From my perspective, as a tinkerer, it makes total sense. For someone who wants to seriously overclock, it's nearly a must have as Intel's chips have crappy toothpaste applied in the factory. If you want to build a dead silent PC or Hackintosh, of course this is also the way to cool things down by 15 to 20 degrees. I think that's all to tell you about deleting. So next video is an in-depth tutorial on how to overclock the CPU and the RAM to get maximum performance out of your build, how to resolve errors and glitches and what not to do. Happy hacking and see you in the next video. Peace.